Crowds all on their feet, not one bothered by the heat. Imagine them in the driver's seat. Trigger flag would be sweet. Bring it up. The following announcement has been paid for by the NPR. In a league known for close racing and exciting results, stand one team that is different. One team that has set the bar to average. That team is Mid-Pack Racing. When other teams win on the track, there is one team that wins in the after party. That team is NPR. So tune in Tuesdays, 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 and watch NPR battle for their place on top of the bell curve. MPR, because 10th through 19th has a one in it too. MPR. And hello again, everyone. Welcome back here to PTRS TV. We're live here tonight under the night lights of the skies. It's Richmond Raceway and the Fast and Fun Champion Power Equipment Cup Series are here to go out and play. We're a little bit here on this very short but technical track known as Richmond Raceway. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Richmond, Virginia. I am your host, the Crusader Christian Shriver. Joining me in here with my good friend and colleague, Dustin Sonecker, or Sparky as you may know him. And Dustin, tonight we got a whole laundry list of drivers that start our field in. So without further ado, I'll start row one. You go down the rows. Row number one It's going to be Kale Gale, and the 83 is outside. Randall Falks will be in the number three. All right, in row number two, it's going to be Robert Lawrence in car number 34, and Grant Enfinger returns in car number 98. Row three sees the Marauder James Harris in the four, and it is outside. That'll be the 35 Tyler Meeks. We have Sheldon Pearson in car number eight, and row four, and alongside him, Greg the Man Janzik, car number 40. Row five sees Kyle Holden in that 12, it is outside. The bounty hunter, Sean Bounty in the 19. Row six is Michael Davis in car number five and Brian Lorenzo in car number 77. Row seven sees George Young there in the 48 is outside. That is the 82 of old Brock Whitehead. Row number eight, we got Stephen Clegg in car number 22 and Caleb Forsyth in car number 78. Row nine sees the wild child and the nine is outside the 39, Jonathan Diamond. Row number 10 is Kevin Ward in the, the triple digit number 112 and John Thacker in no, car number 56. Row 11 sees Stephen Gibson in the 21 is outside the 44. That's Matthew Johnston. Row number 12, Garth Snyder in car number 88. And two is outside William Mann Jr. car 29. Row 13 sees Rick Starge in the 27 is outside the 42. Austin Hable. Row 17. 
15 is Robert Gerard in car number 54 and Brad Patton in car number 10. Uh, we row 14, buddy, but row 15 is Nathan Meyer. The 24 is outside Richard Forchell in the 90. Final starter, Charles White in the 51. Rounds out a 31 class field here tonight. Yep, sorry, I forgot to carry the one and minus the two on that, folks. Sorry about that. This is why I kicked you out of grade school and made sure you never did simple math again. Yeah, I'm never really good at that math anyway, but that's okay. <laughs> Well, welcome to our world. Hey, hello, Stephen Tyler Plus. Good to have you back on board, bud. We saw him last night in the truck series returning with the lemonade stand machine. And he's saying, oh, great. Now I got to listen about NPR. Hey, it ain't my fault they paid for this interview, all right? I, at this point, they, the producers told me I got to throw it in just once, at least on a broadcast. And I told them I only do it in the intro. From there, we stick to normal traditions, so. <laughs> Yeah, we just got to keep tradition going on. They got to have their little bit of time on TV, I suppose. I suppose so, mm -hmm. but nevertheless, I see tonight presented in part by our good friends over at Champion Power Equipment here. Oh, hold on. Someone, hold on a minute. What, producers, you got it all backwards. How did we screw this up? We had the Green Mountain Grill stuff up and running here for a minute. I know I know the Green Mountain Grills are still a presented part for the Fast and Fun Series, but we're a champion power coin Fast and Fun Cup Series, not the trucks tonight, guys. What, what are we doing down here with this? Looks like we have some producer problems going on. Uh, well, all I can say is that when we get that overlay fixed in the, uh, re in the broadcast for YouTube, I hope they uh, make sure that they don't include that. But nevertheless, race fans, we're coming off of turn number four. Enough troubles, enough problems. Get to the green. Let's get racing. K.O. Gale will lead him off as the entire field will have to chase him down. Yes, they definitely will. K.O. Gale, the leader of the field, pretty blistering lap in qualifying. We'll see if he can back it up the whole race long. 130 laps oh, here tonight. Oh, Robert Lawrence, look out. Hold on, hold on. Oh, Sheldon Pierce is not going to do it, though. Oh, man. Oh, look out, look out. Doink, 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 doink. Yeah, uh, a whole lot of doinkage. Ouch, and a little more wreckage in between. We got a caution. Oh, my goodness gracious. I was, <laughs> I was just about to say, deja vu from last night. Sheldon Pearson had troubles really trying to keep that truck online the entire night, especially after the restart. Well, deja vu. It happened again. But this time he was able to save it, maybe taking a few things off that. But the 98 of Grant Infinger, he took a big hit there from the 8 of Sheldon Pearson. But unfortunately for... Pearson, he was not able to succeed and get out of that mess and the whole field coming to a dead wreck in the front. Yeah, and that, that's a real shame right there because that was right around about the 10th spot. So that's pretty much right in the front of the field. So once he got sideways and all that, everybody else tried to tried to avoid him, but it's so hard to try to avoid some, but something like that. It's extremely difficult to avoid anybody. Remember, we are on a, only a three-quarter mile long track, and this track here yeah, of Richmond Raceway, this is a track that commands and determines respect on multiple levels and can really test the best of drivers, including some of the Man Beast level Kyle drivers here with three My More Sports. Good to have you on board tonight, Man Beast. How's it going, Chris? Going pretty good, bud. Hey, right now the uh, Sun Drop number 29, old man, man's maintenance machine currently uh, having a little bit of a get around here with these guys out of the start, isn't it? Yeah, I uh, I thought we were uh, semi pro fake drivers for a minute. We had a rough start there. I uh, avoided the wreck at least, but uh, I qualified back of the pack as usual because. Uh, you know, if it ain't a hard race for me, I don't enjoy it. Well, you certainly seem to enjoy trying to work your way up to the front, so we'll let you figure that out and uh, progress through this race here tonight, sir. Yes, sir. Bumpers and cuss words. I'll be up there sooner or later. Bumpers and cuss words. <laughs> Call it good, my man. Good luck. Sounds good, man. I'll see you guys in a little bit. See you later. I think he might be the first time I've ever heard someone say bumpers or cuss words getting up to the front. Man, we need to get that trend. <laughs> no, we do not need to be putting on that on Twitter. That's a lot. We've already got enough problems dealing with some other guys out there. <laughs> Trust me right now, folks. Stay away from Twitter at this moment. There looks like Go Fast Motorsports. I was just about to bring in Tyler Meeks. And I heard something go down there. I think the motor might have just quit on the 35. He'll have to get that into pit road immediately and get that one cleaned up here. So. Well, I was going to talk with him, but I guess we'll just get this guy out of the way real quick because everybody knows we'll have to talk with him. Here he is, Zanny fan, Craig. Zanny, thank everybody. Good afternoon, sir. We're uh, we're one degree, but I don't mind. Let's uh, let's have a couple of fun laps together maybe uh, at speed here. I've already picked up five spots in, what, three quarters of a lap, so it should be fun. 
Well, I was about to say, you literally have uh, pretty much put this thing in full gear and full timing mode last time out at New Hampshire, but now you're kind of finding yourself in a little bit of a pickle here at Richmond. How, how much more difficult is it with the Cup Series here compared to what you did with the trucks? Cars are a lot harder to control here. Um, plus, we got the 750 horsepower package. I believe the trucks run normally at about 570, so we have more horsepower to deal with. Uh, we have a stiffer field of competition as well, so that always makes it a little bit more challenging. Uh, we'll see if we can get by Harris here for B2. Yeah, we sure did. So I, I don't want to lose sight of Randall here. Obviously, everybody knows what he's capable of, um, and Kale jumped the initial start, so he's actually going to be fighting his way through the field. Um, potentially, maybe he'll have some issues that he's going to have to address coming through the field, which I don't know. Never, you, you never want to wish it on anybody, as somebody, especially somebody as respectable as Kale. But um, you know, it just—it's part of racing here. And uh, yeah, Randall's actually Randall's not rolling the corner too well. We might be able to attack here in a little bit. Well, while you figure out how to go attack him, make sure you keep it clean. And like Kyle Busch and Dale Earnhardt Jr. a couple years ago, we'll let you have at it and have Ooh, some fun down here. Dirty here, yes, sir. Thanks, man. I appreciate you talking. Good to hear it from you, James. And yes, folks, you may have heard that right. We've had uh, we've had our fair share of people get into it here at Richmond Raceway. It may not be a track that's high on the list of many fans out there with their favorites, but it certainly can give them quite the show, nevertheless. We've got a caution coming out. I think Garth Snyder might be having some problems down there. Yeah, yeah, right Get for the end of that, we had a caution out there. Looks like Mr. Garth Snyder might have got attacked by somebody there on the front straightaway. Take a look. Go to the replay and take a look and see what happened. Well, at least you got it all on the influence here. Figure out what happened to the PT Mr. Replay. We got some fans joining us in well tonight. Kevin Kershaw rooting on his boys at Oxtone Management. Talk, William Man coming on board. Talk about Stack Field and yeah, you can see right there. Uh, right there. Unfortunately, a little bit of trouble for the 88. Gets a little bit of a love tap, I believe, from the number 10. Taking a look at it from another angle here. We'll go from the uh, high cam here. It's actually. Had to turn the camera away for a minute while we were looking at the comments section. Here's what happened. So Snyder did get a little bit loose coming off turn four. And, well, thankfully, unlike Spin Gay, at least he actually was spinning and actually got tagged and returned for it. So at least we know that's all good, Diddy. <laughs> I guess uh, I guess in that case, his arm was not itching in that case. <laughs> I would well, say his arm's not itching up at all. But then again, you know, the funny thing is, like I said, most drivers don't really talk about Rich Nick except for the controversies and... Funny enough, man, it there hasn't been too much controversy really on this track since we've been on iRacing. It's been more in the real world, but there's one thing we know about the real world is eventually we have to run into someone who likes to cause trouble in the real world, and I don't think anyone does it better than the guy we have on right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John Thacker. Uh, I'm a saint, and I'm offended by that statement. <laughs> what? Uh, troublemaker. Never done that. <laughs> Yes, yes. All the all the times the cones said that other said otherwise, they were false accusations, right? Yeah, they they made all that up. Conspiracy. <laughs> Cone and on. Okay, all seriousness around here, Thacker. Right now, currently, um, trying to get back from the troubles you had earlier on last night with the truck series, and now bringing the Cup series to Richmond. Another kind of short track stable, but in essence, you've been able to keep the speeds up here with the Cup series. Uh, what does it take here tonight to win a Richmond? Well, um, probably going to be some dumb luck for me. I've already used my fast repair on lap one. Uh, checked up for a crash. The guys behind me didn't have that, that opportunity. So uh, fast repair down. Now i got to drive with my fingers crossed and maybe beat somebody on some pit strategy. Well, I certainly got a lot of time to do it here. So nevertheless, appreciate your time and best of wishes and luck to you and the NPR boys. I appreciate it. And, you know, if all else fails, I'll just come join you in the booth and hang out. You know, I already got Dustin here with me, though, right? Oh, well, never mind. You got it covered, then. <laughs> well, I could always save a seat for you. Oh, no. <laughs> as long as you fire the producer. <laughs> I'll see you later, Thacker. Have a good one, buddy. Have a good night. Sparky, I told you not to get this guy encouraged around here. <laughs> no, I was trying to get him a seat up here. I'm maybe get him a custom-made NPR seat and sit right up in here and have a little bit more of a different color commentary. The last thing NPR needs around here is any more credibility and all that, but we'll give a little bit of love here to our other boys here in the number five, that being Michael Davis here. Michael, out of the gate here, currently in the five and up five right now. How's the car feeling so far out of the gate? 
Uh, all right so far, I think. I haven't really had a very many laps to get a good feel of it, but trying to stay out of trouble and move our way forward. For sure, then. I know you got a little bit of company down there as well with uh, one of the NASCAR veterans. Um, how is it kind of overwhelming, a little more difficult to kind of keep that out of your head, or do you feel like they're just any other driver on the track? No, I mean, they're, they're definitely, you know, they're good. Uh, you know, I, I feel comfortable racing around them because you're not, not really as worried about them making a mistake, so it's nice, but they, they definitely are fast. For sure there. Well, nevertheless, for Uncle Hogan, Motor Sports, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Davis, number five. Appreciate your time here tonight, bud. Thank you. He gets ready to get back to the action, as do we here. Dustin, take it away, buddy. All right. Pace car's going to head right on in here. We've got Randall Fox out in front with Craig Janzik on his outside. Green flag back underway. Here we are back under Richmond. Down into turn one they go. Tracy Holder and on for Kyle Holden, as well as Kevin Kersher showing some love to our boy Thacker earlier. Off the back straight away they go, firing them off on all cylinders here right now. The Mullen Man, Robert Lawrence, trying to redeem himself after a horrible race last night at New Hampshire Motor Speedway in the Green Mountain Grill Fast Fun Truck Series. Off a corner four here, everyone now pacing themselves up. Kyle Holden actually in the 12. He's starting to make the way to the front. He's got himself a hard run coming off there, looking for the bounty hunter in the 19. That's currently a battle for the seventh position currently that's where Bounty is holding right now with holding right behind him in the eighth spot and again it's gonna be extremely difficult to watch here tonight just how smooth each corner needs to be and each driver has to be on their runs remember this track it may be a little bit stronger than the usual short track but what it does in way it carries as much of anything because it really is still very difficult to master each corner remember three and four are completely different compared to how one and two are one and two kind of has almost kind of like that, almost like that rainbow effect. Like that's the best way I can explain. You're going on the front straightaway. It's almost like you're going across the rainbow and then you're bringing it down into turn one and two. You're swinging into that long curved end. And if you hit the corner just wrong, that rear end likes to sneak off from underneath you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, turn definitely coming, especially coming off of turn two, that rear end likes to get after. Sometimes it feels like there's like a little bit of a hump up to the top of the moment there. Feels like the rear tires lose a little bit of traction there, and then all of a sudden you're looking at the inside wall. Now, Sparky, you uh, you and the pedal of the metal racing the crew had actually raced here not too long ago, and you know obviously these drivers are not working on the same setup you guys had to. You had to run on the iRacing setup, where these guys they figured out a little setup that actually tightened the car up to gain and build more speed and actually stay away from spinning so much. Yeah, something, so sometimes I kind of get, get a little jealous about that because I like to kind of get my car a little bit more just like these guys do than have to run the high racing setup sometimes because the high racing setup seem to be, to me, most of those seem to be more run the cars really tight and burn tires off really quick on those. Whereas with the uh, custom setups that you can make with these cars, you can make them to where you can make the tires last a little longer and handle a lot better. For sure there now, obviously, uh, one thing we're kind of mentioning, obviously, is that, yes, you want a looser setup to kind of keep more speed and build more runoff, but for tracks like this, a short track mentality can be based on basically keeping it more tightened up, more rhythmic, and really that's where a lot of these drivers are going to be looking for it here time and time again. You just saw a little bit of the 54 of Robert Gillard and Steve Clegg getting into it there while the four, well, we watched on with the 42 of Austin Habel make a little bit of a show biz here at Kale Gale. Gale, you heard earlier on, he had to go to the outhouse because he did not do the correct start on the uh, on the initial starting point. And when the first wreck went out, that is what caused all this to happen for him. Now, he's found himself in a very treacherous area because with the 31 car field, that's a lot of drivers to have to muscle your way around and to really get a, and get some speed off of because again, the gap is about eight seconds from the race leader, Randall Falks. And we know Gale and Falk, so they can get up to each other. They'll have a little fun with one another there. Yeah, definitely. What what Gale needs, actually, is a couple of cautions to try to kind of settle things down a little bit and get himself back up through here because the longer this continues on at this point, he's running back in 17th and he has to drive his way through the field. He's going to use his stuff up by the time he even gets close to the front at this point. So it's more or less patience, but as well hoping maybe you'll get a couple of cautions here to get caught right back up. It all just depends on how the drivers play this track in and how they want to fight it out against each other. Remember, we know that they're going to be very close together, a little bit tight and cornered action racing here. You know, it may not seem like much, but really to me, 
I think the thing about Richmond so far is that I'm pretty impressed with the fact that these guys are pretty much staying kind of closer together and they're not they're not really getting too ram rambunctious or a little too over the top about how they want to hit each corner. They seem to be finding their little marks and almost kind of it's almost kind of that Martinsville style where it's like you got to just kind of wait for somebody to make a little mistake and then take advantage. Yeah, and definitely uh, that's what we're seeing here. You're starting to see some cars are able to kind of hold one groove there, and then all of a sudden you'll see a car jump up on the outside and they get past our freight train in a way. It looks like some guys, though, are finding a little bit of uh, uh, run up on that outside. I've just seen Rick Bornshell on top of Georgie Young up here, and he's trying to get the outside one. You can have multi-grooves here, and it looks like that Bornshell is definitely trying to uh, prove the naysayers wrong and get that high line working. He certainly is, Sparky. Now, I would say high side-wise, there's only two ways to go about it. That's either drive it in deep, make it stick, and then hard charge it off the bottom end if you can, which is pretty much a diamond formation, or do kind of literally the opposite, go up top and then bring it straight back down quickly and then dive it off extremely fast to that corner exit again because, again, the corner exit, if you can get as low as you can there, that is how you build your speed up and turns two however turn three you want to be kind of bringing it more into the middle and bring it back to that wall protection which you know is one of the hardest things to do especially considering when you're having to deal with a lot of other drivers out there yeah and as we was explaining earlier i mean you know turns one and two totally different from three and four one and two like going into turn one you kind of can float the car down in there and then you can you know pick it up and come off the of turn two really hard as long as you don't spin the back end out. And then you go into three and four. And three and four, it seems like you have to get on the brakes a lot more getting into turn three and then trying to get that run off the four. Yeah, one thing I was kind of thinking about too here is you're seeing K.O. Gale kind of moving ahead of the number 10 here, Brad Patton actually, in the uh, F Cancer number 10. I'm not going to say what that thing actually says, but yeah, obviously there's still still little people out here trying to uh, root on and trying to cure up people, make sure that they know that we're still finding cancer even past the October days, which is great to hear. But uh, right now, currently, uh, looking at it from multiple angles here, this is not a three-wide track, obviously. This is not a track that's going to give you, like, oh, my goodness, like, close side-by-side, -side, you know, double-file, triple-file racing all the time, like you would see maybe at the plate tracks or the two-mile longs and all of them. This is a track that is kind of take and go and i think that's one thing that makes it so unique there's not a lot of bump and run spots but there are a lot of areas that allow you to actually kind of kind of almost get it's almost kind of a mental track like that's, i can't really explain it any other way it's like you're trying once you get into that rear view mirror it's almost like when you're mirror driving you so you forget sometimes where you're actually looking which is on the road itself you need to keep your eyes focused on that target find the line you want to hit and make sure you consistently hit it. And you can see Zanny fan right up here. He just made that mistake I was talking about as a Mariah James Harris nearly made him pay for doing that here as Grant Infinger in the 98 now marches in at him. Yeah, and that's the thing. As soon as you take your eyes off the road, if you just miss your mark just a little bit, the next guy behind you is going to be ready to be there to pounce right all over top of it. And Finger is the only one right now holding up the uh, Blackstone Management Racing Team's uh, hopes here and dreams, if you will. They are currently in the top five, but, you know, with Kale Gale behind the leaders by a good margin still, even though, well, I guess I can't say by a good margin. The dude's literally moved up to 13th. He was, he was literally like 22nd, 24th, like maybe five or 10 laps ago, I swear. Yep, he's definitely, definitely still uh, treading his way through the field. Um, he's currently sitting back there in the 13th position he's about now 10 11 seconds off the lead right now and that almost seems like an eternity on this track seems like an eternity yet with the damage on that front end he's still charging through the field like they're saying it's still the man beast William man jr not able to hold him down no, he's not willing uh, well man jr again there's another guy that's been you know who didn't qualify all that well but you know he's made his way up through the field a scale has now passed him for that 12th spot but you have to call to that 29 team they, they've been getting up and getting through the field here pretty that, quickly they have indeed i hope to see maybe if the man beast can possibly find himself in the uh, podium spots here eventually on v Timmons tv again because it seems like he's found himself in a good charge and a good chance or two but just can't seem to finish the race out the way he wants to as you see now, the pass there on the inside, turn three, the Marauder James Harris, the Green Mountain Girl number four, gives the opening and the room up to Grant Infinger. And Infinger, ever so kindly, just decides to sneak on in and uh, take that spot away from him. 
Epps put Enfinger up into fourth, and Harris will drop back into the fifth spot right now. Right now, Mike Randall Fox right now is just showing the way here on this long green flag run. They've now been going almost 40 laps on this run now. And also, real quick, folks, I think I might need to make a technical error on my end. I think there was another teammate with Blackstone Management. I keep forgetting Randall Fox is in this group as well. He's driving that curve records number three, by the way. And I'm not going to say anything about that three because, honestly, again, I have my thoughts about why that's about the three on the track anytime. But Randall Fox in the curve records number three, Blackstone. Uh, Blackstone management colors here tonight really rocking it towards the front and I believe he is a teammate as well so I have to correct myself him and Enfinger are in the top five and they're both holding up the uh, the banner there as I was kindly reminded thank you again there guys but uh, yeah right now I mean folks if there was ever a guy that I feel like wanted to prove that he could go back to back I probably would think it's him because he had a horrible break and lose running out of gas at turn four of New Ham of Nashville Super Speedway, which gave us that hectic finish with Kale Gale just barely eking out the win. But here and now, four seconds ahead of the second place guy, which is the Mullen Man Robert Lawrence. That's pretty darn impressive, all things considered. Especially, especially on a track like this, where everybody's all pretty much close together here to have a five, four, five second lead. That's just almost unheard of. Steven Tyler Plus saying OSB to the front. I'm not sure who he's referring to in the OSB. Sparky, do you have any idea there? Mm, not really sure. I will have to try to get a little bit more better explanation about that. Well, I'm about five seconds away from sending you down there to go do some uh, radio command and figure out what we got going on down there because we got a three wide salute attack on the turn one, turn two embankments. The, Mar the Zanny fam is in trouble. The Mar Here comes Grand Infinger in the 98 trying to show. Case what he is probably going to try to do down in Phoenix come Friday night. Three wide salute now. Normally we wouldn't say three wide here. Normally it doesn't work too well, but there is times where it can work okay. And these guys are doing a pretty good job of it. They're really giving each other plenty of room and a lot of space around here. Certainly there, sure. Now the funny thing is as well here, Sparky, that we, we haven't really talked about here is actually... Well, hold on. Before I get to that thought here, here comes a slider. Drive down low. Head up to the top. Look at that pass. In finger. Attacks the 40. And Zanny Fam cannot hold back the 98. Oh, boy. We almost had a caution. Almost. <laughs> well, where did you see the almost a caution at? Uh, well, Kevin Ward decided he was going to try to get under the 42 there for a moment, and they both kind of got sideways, and there was some tire smoke, but then they were able to straighten it up and continue. We will continue on the green flag just a, almost, a, almost a moment there. Almost a moment. Yeah, the producers are saying maybe we have a little camera angle to show what exactly he's talking about here, so hold on one second. Well, this is what you were talking about, Sparky. And yeah, we're looking at it here. Kevin Ward just barely tapping the 42. Great driving, though, by the 42 to hang on. And straighten it back up. 112, Kevin Ward obviously knew what he'd done and let him have a spot back. Austin Hable is able to get back to work and back onto the track. So good on both drivers for working it out. Yeah, it was kind of unique because he got into the side of him there and it kind of sp kind of almost spun through the corner and it's just like almost both cars almost came to a complete stop almost and then was able to get back on. So good job by both of the fellas. Absolutely indeed. And Steven Zyreplast reminding us of his Olsen performance led by the Danny Mame is what he was referring to. I, 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 I'm sorry, Tyler, but uh, there's times like I legitimately keep forgetting that these guys are teammates or driving teams out here. Because honestly, most of the time when we're out on the track, you and me, Sparky, we both just race each other. We're not even trying to worry about teamwork or any of that stuff. The only time teams are involved are just maybe like give you pointers or clues out here. That's all you do. Most of the time you're out on that track, you're racing for yourself. There is no there is no help winning it. And normally just pointers or maybe getting a little bit of setup help with the car, especially with these guys running sometimes open setups with these cars. Maybe you do get a little bit of help from your teammates and you know what can make the car run better for you, might run better for them, you know, or whatnot. But, yeah, once you get out on that racetrack and you get down to it, it's pretty much every driver for themselves. Now, I'm just going to focus in on one little thing here real quick, folks. You may have seen the pit strategy th come up on our screen here. Look right down below in seven. You just saw the Marauder get passed by K.L. Gale for seventh place. 
But look what Kale Gale had done in pit road. He went in, had a, had a service penalty, but look what he did. He took four sets of tires, and ever since then, he's had less laps to have to worry about charging up to the front. That's why he is so fast right now, and that's why he is just kind of moving through people left and right. He's got a fresher set of tires by a couple laps, and a couple laps on a short track is literally like 30 on a long track. That is a great point you bring up there. The everybody else has been out here about 50 lap tires. He's been out here on 40 lap tires, and that 10 laps does make a difference. And right now it's starting to show up because now he has saved those tires by being back there through the traffic. Everybody else has used up their stuff, and he's able to just pass them as well. For Sarah there and Steven Tire Plus, uh, yes, we are very well aware of uh, this Eddie Fam's ordeals, but thankfully Brock Whitehead, Ethan Meyer, Robert Lawrence, obviously working with him and working with that team to kind of keep Olsen performance going here and right now Brock has seen him have a little bit of a trouble or two in the cup series as of late hopefully that will change in due time but I think it's going to take a little bit of work down there as we are vastly approaching here our halfway caution point remember there is a stage caution in the halfway generally so they will be kind of pushing their limits and pushing themselves forward but we'll get that stage break I guarantee you one thing they're going to have a lot of trouble holding back some of these guys that are pushing them up as hard as they are right now, including what could be best considered as the guy to watch out for this season in 77, Brian Aronzo. Yeah, I know most people don't talk about him here, but the main thing is like he's got a truck series championship to his name with his flat blistering speeds and hard control. And without him having to focus on the truck series, now he could just focus on everything he needs to with a cup. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, now that you don't, I, I, I mean, in some cases, more racing is good, but sometimes it is kind of good to uh, take a step back and kind of focus on one series more than another, try to put more of an effort into that. But with him doing that, it looks like it has really helped him a lot in that 77 car. I kind of call him the covert operative because he kind of just is there, and then all of a sudden at the end of the race, boom, there he is in contention for a top five and even a win sometimes. A little scary moment coming up from back stretch to turn three into four there. Gar Snyder, the 88, nearly collecting in with the five and the 83. But Kale Gale, presence of mind, backed off, went up top side to stay away from the 42 there. Austin Abel still struggling to keep that thing enabled and trying to keep ahead of the pack. But he's just going to have to accept his loss and cut his ties because he's going to get put a lap down as the 40 and the 83 now take the charge and go to work. Yeah. Yeah, I tell you what, I'm impressed with this 83 car right now. He is now up into the top five. After a while back, he was back here in the 20s, and he has motored his way up into the top five now in that number 83 car right now. I thought Lenny from Motorhead was uh, in, was in the upper room, the shadow realm, if you will. No, apparently K.O. Gale has resurrected him tonight. He's got the Motorhead playing in. He's saying it's all about the game, boys. Ah, a wrestling reference. Yes. That wasn't a wrestling reference. That's just literally the actual name of the band, you smart one. <laughs> it's all about the game? Yeah. No, oh, okay, okay. Hold on a minute. If you're going to put the Triple H reference in here, then, yeah, we can go that route. But that is a legitimate song by Motorhead. Thank you. It is. It is. Well, right now, the guy singing the songs right now is this uh, Randall Fox fellow up here in the three car. Now it is now a 10-second lead. <laughs> right now nobody could really touch him at this moment are you sure we didn't have senior literally resurrected and take that car over or is that actually randall fox and the richmond raceway we know i know old senior used to race extremely hard here at richmond raceway and before they even did the repavement and all that he was probably one of their toughest hombres to deal with but you know for the fact is that curb records number three may have resurrected something here now he is bad fast and not being really tested and he's actually going to make his way up to more lap traffic and the highest lap traffic he's gone so far is up even into the 14th spot yeah yeah with this long green flag run now we haven't had cautions in a while and i know we're getting close to the halfway caution here but yeah pretty much the entire half part of the field is now a lap down so a lot of guys are really really begging for this caution to try to help see if they can try to set up the car or try to figure something out to try to even maybe get back to the lead lap or even make a run at this guy now remember though with that halfway caution point breakdown that actually could stabilize and give these guys a bit of a chance here to actually find more momentum and more of a chance to fight back up there with that first place driver 
And for those wondering at home, no, it's not an SRX style where they just kind of call the caution when they feel like it to kind of keep drivers more in line or there's a certain limit. No, there is a certain amount of laps they said in the rules before they came on tonight that they must abide by and they must work with in throughout these events. So. Absolutely. Yep. You don't want to. You don't want to get yourself in trouble, and end up getting put in the back if you didn't follow one of the rules. We already saw a little bit, bit of that earlier with the uh, jump start there from Mr. Gale Gale. Uh, unfortunately, but you know, yeah, you gotta. There is rules out there, and unfortunately, you know, sometimes somebody gets put in the shadow round because of it. But you know, that's the way it goes here. That's the name of the game sometimes, and I'm. Okay, Sparky, did you have my rule book rearranged? Did they take the stage breaks out? I thought they had the halfway caution break still. I thought they did too. We are at the halfway point at this time. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe the race official fell asleep up there in the flag. Uh, and wake the, them up. Oh, well, either that or uh, honestly, I think maybe they actually got rid of that rule entirely. So I, I just remember, I got so used to calling it because early they would all of a sudden caution comes out halfway through and they had to remind me like, yeah, we do that for the races. I'm like, oh, okay. So I've got used to saying that for like the last two seasons. Now that's gone. So kind of a little bit of a change up mix up if you will so i do apologize i they do have it in the trucks but they didn't get rid they got rid of it in cup it looks like so honestly not too worried about that i kind of like that idea let them go out and race their race but there's one downside is how are you gonna catch randall fox he's already 11 seconds ahead of these guys that's gonna be something yeah good now now well now now that gets into a get to a thing where now we're going to start seeing green flag pit stops here. Here comes, I believe, the 77. I think he's going to head down pit road. We're starting to see some fellows come down and get those fresh tires now, so this is really going to be a pivotal point of the race now. Yeah, Brian Ronzo heading down into pit road. You get the look of the wild child, Eli Childs at nine. He's up 13 spots. Man, I start back in 17th, and he is your defending season champion from last year. He had a pretty much a solid base and a solid race all the way to the very end, but he told me earlier today that there's one thing he's dead set and focused on. It's keeping his momentum alive and looking to push himself to its absolute core and limits if it means being on the top of the mountain again. But I, but I, I will say this. I don't think I've ever seen a competition as competitive or as seemingly tough to beat as maybe what this series represents here. You're not kidding because every week we've come out here and we broadcast these races with this group, these group of guys out here, and they've always put on a pretty good show out here, and they've been very competitive. You, you just, you just don't know what you're going to have happen here. Is like you mentioned too earlier about Falks running out of gas in Nashville, you know, something like that. You know, there's always something going on in this series, and it's always a pleasure to put these guys out here and watch them run. Now, I can't say, though, with uh, the fuel mileage, gas mileage-wise, I would say I don't think Falks or Gale have anything to worry about there. Now, how many laps they put in and how many laps they got left to go. One more pit stop, and they should be pretty much set to go, set for it as long as they don't undershoot it, which it's a very possibility. We have seen before where some folks kind of undershot just by a few laps, and they don't even realize it until it's too little too late. Yeah, absolutely, especially some place like here, like, Nashville Super Speedway, different beast there. It's a little bit longer, a little bit longer straight. You use a lot more fuel there. So, you know, it's kind of like you only got, like, I believe they ran 60 laps. That's what the max was before he ran out. So it's about 60 laps here. Oh, man, now we got caution out on the racetrack here. Caution lights are off right now. Nathan Meyer coming to a dead halt here. We'll see what happened, unfortunately, to the 24. Take a look at this one here. Laps were continuing to nail down, and it looked like maybe just a slight mishap in out of pit road for the 24. Take a look at it here. Had to fast forward it slightly here, and there it is right there. Came off of pit road, and he actually claims the number nine of Eli the Wild Child slightly there, and that was enough to bring out the caution. But I'm honestly, that was probably the worst timing. For guys like Randall, for uh, guys like Brad and figure of them, because they wanted they wanted to pit road, I don't think they were thinking it was going to come out that quickly of an air caution. Yeah, definitely. And this, yeah, we're back to that scenario where now 
a lot of the field is now going to be a lap or four down because of the green flag pit stops. So this is really going to put a kink in the plan of some of these guys. And now it's decision time. Do you take the wave around? Do you stay out and hope for more cautions? What do you do here? <laughs> well, there's only one way to find that out for sure. And that's with the wild child, Eli, the wild child's here. Let's take a listen in and child's right now. We had a little bit of an error coming out of pit road, but it looked like you were able to avoid it. Is the car okay though? No, it's it's toast. It's but, kaput. Yeah, we'll uh, salvage what we can, but you know we got in that first incident, and uh, you know we worked our way back up top five, pit it, and come out and get destroyed. So. Yeah, a bit of a tough break there. From our end, it didn't look like it got hit as hard as it did. I guess we should have looked a little closer, but uh, that is a tough break there for a child. So, uh, do you have an instant repair, though, you can try to get used up and get back up into this race? No, I had to use it on that first caution. I got wrecked like three different times during that first one, so that's gone. So we got what we got now. Well, the good news is you got something bright coming up next week. Obviously, Watkins Glen won't spoil nothing, but it certainly will be a big showdown there for you and your crew, won't it? Yeah, I'm just ready to get done with Richmond. My favorite track, and we just ain't had no luck tonight, so I'm just ready to move on. For sure there. Well, nevertheless, Charles, appreciate you taking time to talk with us here, bud. Thanks. Number nine, ladies and gentlemen, Eli the Wild Child. You can, you can see it in his eyes, folks. You can, I know it's... I know we're in the virtual world and all that, but you can just take a look in his eyes. He is livid with himself. He's upset that he's not getting, you know, that kind of break that he feels like he's owed. And, you know, again, it is extremely frustrating as a driver to know that you're just getting kind of the raw end of the deal, the short end of the stick. And you never want to see that happen to a driver. You never want to see that happen to anyone. But there's one thing we can say. We have seen this before, unfortunately. And Mullet Man Robert Lawrence, you have been on that short end of the stick, as we saw last night as well at New Hampshire. Yes, sir. That stick is very short for me. <laughs> but the good news is here is it's a completely different story so far. Anyway, we haven't finished the race, but how has everything been feeling up to this big caution we just had? Ah, uh, cars. Oh, cars. Sorry, there's talking going on. It, the car's been feeling awesome. Uh, other than a lack of a little bit rear grip, but it's going to happen when you have 750 horse and no downforce in the rear end, so it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with it. For sure there. Well, nevertheless, uh, Lawrence, do appreciate you coming on board here tonight. Best wishes of luck finishing this race out. Thank you. Lawrence looking to try to get something figured up and fired in. Driver's looking to get ready to get back to the action. Yep, looks like we're getting the, uh, well, looks like yep, yep, they're going to extend the caution by another lap here to try to get everybody figured out. Looks like a couple of cars did take, a lot of cars took a wave around on this. We're going to try to get this all figured out here. Uh, I was about to say, we got a lot of guys on the, la on the lap down marker right now. I think only even, I think Harris and Mann Jr., Falks, Davis, and Gale are the only ones on the lead lap right now because of that caution. That is going to really send everybody tail whipping and tail spinning just to try to get back into the lead in the winner's circle here. Yeah, definitely gar garfunk with a lot, a lot of people up here now. Now it's going to be a really dog fight, not only up front to the top five, but all these guys will lap down now to try to see who's going to be the first car one lap now. Now, Sparky, you've been in this spot before. You've been in this situation here where you had gone in pit road, but then the wreck happened when you're trying to get a lap back. How it's, how immense and tough is it just to even get anything going? Considering we we're, we're on a kind of level playing field as tough as Richmond. Uh, well, I will get to that in just a moment because uh, the pace car just ducked on in, and we're going right back to green flag racing here. Mirage, James Harris, Michael Davis, and all of them literally trying to hunt down K.O. Gale and Michael Davis back from the complete outhouse to the White House. They're going to have a lot of work to do to stay on this lead lap, but right now, K.O. Gale and Davis are your two front runners here. Davis trying to muster up the courage and take down Gale. He's the only one that can knock him down now from where he's at. Yeah, how about that? Michael Davis, what a run for him right now to get up here get up front here and show what that five car can do and you got James Harris up there Randall Fox trying to get back to the front and Wayne Man Jr. how about that he's up there in the top five he is indeed top five right now I said earlier on I would like to see if he can get himself into that podium position he's doing a great job here looking at strategy and working his tail end of the field 
But again, you know, with this caution, with that caution being as late as it was, is it enough time for drivers to get ahead and back on that proverbial lead lap and for him not to lose too many spots? Because again, if we have another caution or something like that happens, they will give drivers a fair chance and a fair shake of really bringing it back up. Yeah, and as you and as you was asking me earlier about you know getting caught like that, being on pit road and getting caught under the caution like that, lap like that. It's absolutely nerve-wracking. And all these guys like Craig Jezanik in the 40, you know, the mullet man, Robert Lawrence, all these guys now lap down now. You have to scratch and claw yourself, first of all, to try to be the first car one lap down so you get free pass on the next caution if one comes out. But uh, that's positions. And you, you're trying to get up through there. And there's so many cars one lap down and it's just such a struggle and hard. And then, you know, if you get cautions, who knows? You might get a couple of cautions. You might not get any. You might get a couple of cautions and still not get it because you're still six, seven cars down from the guy that's got the um, free pass. So it is very aggravating when that happens. Spark it right now. I've just like, kind of listened in, but I also just watched it closely here with what the three is doing. This is incredible here to say the least. He's mustered a huge run and managed to ban and found himself literally just passing three wide slits all around the field. Just trying to get around, guys, left and right. Catch to Michael Davis and catch Kale Gale. Was there nine, seven seconds ahead of him, respectfully? The Mirage, James Harris, the only other one close in that position. As Gar Snyder decides to open his own lawn care service coming down the front straightaway. Yeah, I always thought that that grass needed a little bit of clipping anyway. It looked like it was getting kind of tall. Uh, like we need it any more longer than it is right now. We're in November right now, my friend. I don't think Virginia needs it. Man, we just finally just finally got the leaves changing over here. <laughs> the 88, unfortunately, losing the control out of turn number four. A tough break there for him, but managed to just recover it a little bit easier than earlier on. Whoa, he's still all over the place there. He swung it right out of turn two. He's hitting the gas pedal. We can't get, say he ain't, but he's finding himself in a bit of a rough patch here right now. And... Yeah, it looks like that car's had a, had seen better days. That car looked pretty roughed up. Looks like he's got a lot of uh, damage all over that car there, and he's just trying to hang on, just trying to log laps at this point. I don't know, man. It, it, I mean, the way I'm looking at it here, like I said, the car seemed to be slacking up a little bit. They maybe get a little bit loose. I know the burnt, when the burnt rubber kind of comes down here, it starts to really tear up the track a little bit. I don't know, maybe it might be opening the door for some of these guys that are usually a little bit faster on a looser car to kind of catch up, but it's really kind of hard, I'm not going to lie, it's really hard to really call any of the race in here, because considering a lot of these guys are lapped down, it's really trying to hard to figure out like who's where and who's what on the track, because positions wise, like so many of them are lapped down, they're really at this point, it's just a matter of survival and getting any positions they can get. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and pretty much from... From Craig Jezanik up there in sixth spot, one lap down, all the way back to Jonathan Diamond in the 19th spot. All those cars, the 13 cars that are one lap down, and they're battling each other. While at the same time, you got five cars that's on the lead lap battling each other. You got all these guys that are two laps down battling each other as well. So just battles all over the track, but because everybody's off sequence with the pit strategy and everything, it's just, just a bona fide mess just trying to figure out where everybody's at. Tom Ward here with the 27 of Rick Stars, and as he tries to clamber down and get up there with Brad Patton, oh, we're going to have a caution, though. There are troubles. Yes, the 42 car over there in turn four. He is Whoa. around. That is Austin Hable. Kev Kale Gale, baby. They probably breathe a sigh of relief. He bounced on the 112 there. That would have not have been a good spot to be in, considering where he is a race leader at the moment. And it looked like from my vantage point of what I could see there, it looked like that the 112 of uh, Ward may have got the 42 car just a little bit in the rear quarter. We'll have to take a look at the replay to be certain of that. Deja vu, too, as well. They got each other there in turn one, too. They get them each other in turn three and four. This time, though, they were not able to save with the 54 colliding in. Hable, once again, getting kind of tired by the 112. I know Kevin was trying to avoid conflict and interest there, but... Again, you know, that's that's kind of one of the things about short tracks. It's going to happen eventually. You cannot escape it. Yeah, it tries too much. You try to, you know, if you're going after that guy in front of you, you try to find a way around him, and sometimes you 
it, you try to push the envelope a little bit more and sometimes it's just a little bit too much at times and that like that may have been the case right there so they'll be pretty much down in the final 30 laps here which you know that could be a bit of an advantage or a bit of a disadvantage depending on how you look at it here but we're gonna go talk with one of our go fast more sports guys ladies and gentlemen please welcome on now the 35 of tyler meeks and meeks this is pretty much kind of what you and a lot of drivers were looking for so far, wasn't it? Yeah. But with the long run game, I was way down. I got in that first lap scuffle, which, you know, seems to be the case around here. So, you know, back of the pack. So I was like, I got to go for the long run. Hopefully, caution came out, which it did, kind of saved me. And here we are in eighth place, a lap down, about to get the wave around. So we'll be back on the lead lap in eighth place with like 10 lap old tires. 10 lap all tires and obviously you know we've talked about how fresh tires can really make the difference around these parts what will it take for you though to get up into the top five top three if you will maybe podium wise to see if you got something for these boys probably get a little bit aggressive give them a bumper um, some of these guys have a hard time letting you by so i've already used it twice before to get by after i ran some people down so try to be aggressive but not too aggressive to make them still like me for sure there. Well, nevertheless, appreciate your time here, though, Tyler. We'll uh, go fast. We'll definitely have to see if the uh, bumper can get a little faster around here. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. You too, buddy. Play you know, on the 35 there. Tyler Meeks having a little talk with him there. We'll go ahead and listen in as well from our three wide motorsports crew member, the number four, James Marauder Harris here. Now, Harris, last night, last minute scruffles in the last lap obviously cost you big time but now you're kind of in the same boat position but you're facing off against some heavy heavy hitters in the likes of those drivers that are up front what is it going to be though for you to make it up into the podium here why you got brady bringing up uh bad memories chris <laughs> it's my job i'm a broadcaster for a reason no, uh, sorry, I don't, I don't have my whole voice right now from what I told you earlier. But uh, yeah, it's it's been a weird race. We had a, we I think we have a top five car. We kind of burned up our right front a little bit on that first run, but with the craziness of the pitting and the cautions, we've got ourselves back in P5 on the lead lap. I think everybody behind me except for man has old tires. So as long as this stays pretty clean, which hopefully will get us a good finish tonight. I don't think I have anything for the uh, the two pros up there, but we're gonna do what we can. Well, you never know around here. We've said it before, we'll say it again. On TTRS TV, you never can expect anything but the unexpected. That's the truth for sure. All right, appreciate your time here, Harris. All right, man, thanks. Yes, he is having a little bit of a trouble down there. I'm not going to talk about what he told me here. Just know he is currently dealing with some things down there. As uh, We've talked about the injuries plaguing some of these drivers. We talked about Chantel Pottle's injuries she was being plagued with last month on Monday night there with the Pushing Limits Racing League but still managed a second place finish. But, you know, I, again, I even I even I got my own injuries as well, actually, Sparky. I have not been racing as much due to my left arm uh, undergoing some, uh, shall we say, surgery, if you will. And even I'm, I'm currently... Uh, you know healing up from that it's extremely difficult to even get around it as a driver but just fighting it off even more with the wheel and really a thing that's giving you about 15 newton meters or even whether it's six or 15 newton meters of force it doesn't matter that when you're trying to work that wheel and you're trying to keep yourself under control with the pedal and dealing with these guys there's just so much effort and work into it that it just makes it even harder to do as a healthy human being absolutely and you think well all these guys are sitting at home on these uh doing the sim racing on the rigs and whatnot they don't get you know, banged up or whatever i tell you what you know they're they're everyday real life stuff happens out there people bang up their legs bangs up their knees and stuff like that i've done it too and i tell you what you still go out there and run that that and that just takes a lot of effort as we're getting back under the green flag here folks back to the green flag kevin kershaw ruining on his boy kale right now kale gale is your race leader he gets the early jump on things randall fox up we saw what he was doing earlier now he's going to be put to the test can he take down kale gale in this case yeah i'm waiting to see what what fox can do here now now that he's back up toward the front here and see what he can do with gale we'll see what we're out of the two and don't forget there's mike davis in there too lurking Michael Davis has not had a strong finish since he pretty much came onto the scene. We know he can definitely get it done, though. He's got a lot of work put into this char, put into these races from time and time again. But, you know, is he going to be able to finish it out when it counts most here tonight? 
One other driver to watch out for, the man beast, William Mann Jr. And William Mann Jr., remember, he started back in the 24th position. He's got himself in the top five for tonight. This would be a good shot on arm for him here tonight if he can hold on and get this top five out of the way. To hold it off, though, he's really going to have to work pretty much every ounce of himself and every ounce of that track and then some. It's extremely difficult to do, and it's very tight and corner-packed to work with. But, he, again, you know, if you can get it done, it is certainly going to help you for that long-term usage, and he is doing everything he can. Meanwhile, lap traffic still being a little bit of a factor here for some. John Thacker, as a matter of fact, actually is ahead there with Steve Clegg as well. While the 21 there tries to stay out of trouble with 34 of the Mullen Man, Robert Lawrence kind of sneak his way in. But for Steve Clegg, for Stephen Gibson, and uh, Thacker, man, i got to believe right now, they are just absolutely infuriated with this race so far. Yeah, a lot of those guys, Thacker, Clegg, Gibson, already two laps down. Yeah, pretty frustrating when you're that two laps down. Frustrating enough being one lap down. And having two. Oh, oh. That's going to be a little bit more frustrating when you're going three wide saloon coming out of turn four. And end finger up on the high side. He got kind of got pushed up there. And I don't think he's going to remember, forget that one here with that 19. Sean Bounty doing a little bounty hunting on him. <laughs> it definitely was bounty hunting on that. Wow, good job by all three drivers. Getting through that corner very well. That's also Brad Patton there in that purple number 10. Yeah, Bounty has a lap down too. So, I mean, I really, I will give him credit where credit's due. That's a great move for extremely aggressive racing, but I don't really think that was the right call to be trying to build up as much speed as you are at that moment in time, considering you are kind of leading off the last bit of laps, really. The only thing you have left going for you is even if you do somehow get another couple cautions in, you then have to make sure you didn't make any enemies getting up to the front. That's that's kind of the hard thing about motorsports, though, is trying to figure out whether or not someone did a, a hard racing maneuver intentionally or whether or not they was just just kind of the eerie of the moment. That's kind of the hard part about it. Yeah, you really don't know until either afterwards or maybe you talk about it or maybe you don't talk about it for weeks. Who knows? <laughs> it might just continue on. It just depends on how drivers are out there. Every person's different. But, yeah, you, you're right. Yeah, that's... It's hard to tell sometimes whether it is intentional or not, but it happens in racing. That, that, that's the, the will of the beast there. Today. As I've always said, the chaotic world of racing only is massed and perplexed by the, uh, the drivers that come forth and try to claim the top prize. And we're certainly seeing that and then some here. Now, what is helping out that these guys in the top five, like William Mann, Mann Jr. right now in the fifth spot, those guys did come down and get fresh tires. So the top five cars all with fresher tires than all those cars behind them because all those cars behind them, like Paul Man, Robert Lawrence, and Tyler Meeks, took that wave around for that caution. So they're not going to have the best tires to try to get up any further than fifth right now unless, you know, they do a lot of good tire saving. It's going to take a lot of work, though, to even really put yourself into that position and into that manner because, again, you're trying to deal with the added pressure of lap traffic as well as the guys right in front of you. Oh, the Mullen Man loses in a turn four again. Through the grass, oh, into the inside wall a little bit. And once again, his luck continues to just get worse on p TV. The Blaster Master cannot catch a break and seem to find himself in the good place. Once again, another short track that makes the 34 fall victim to struggles and problems on the track. Yeah, and that's, that's a shame, too, because he was the first guy of the wave around cars up there. He was running in six, so he was the first guy that took that wave around and got himself back in that position to, you know, maybe possibly get a top five, and now that is now just on to the play side. Sure, there right now as we go back in the pack here. We talked earlier about the wild child. We thought, I thought he said earlier his car was done. I think he was either joking with us or he was lying because honestly, he's got damage. That thing is still pushing to its limits. He's caught up with his any fam in the 40. Drake Jantic now, granted, Jantic's kind of getting blocked off by a few guys in front of him. One of being even the 77 of Lorenzo and Brad Patton in the 10. But I mean. If anything, I wouldn't be too worried about having a too bad of a spot if I can get in the top 10, honestly. Sir, and he thought the car was completely done for. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think he'd be absolutely thrilled with the top 10 at this point, the way his night is gone, as he talked about earlier. I mean, he's he's all knocking on the door of it, so that would almost feel like a win to him tonight if he could get up there and get in the top 10. You can get a good look from our our high cam here up in the crowds, up in the top zone here. The luxury box obviously giving us a nice little field view here. You can see 
Every driver making their way around the track, making their rounds, trying to find any little piece that they can and trying to find every little speed boost they got. The 40 of Zanny Fam Janzik still holding down the number nine to champion power equipment Ford Mustang versus that Pennzoil Menards number 40 Mustang. Which one's going to give? Which one's going to break first? I honestly, if Jantha gets passed in with the damage dub number nine, I think that might make him a little bit mad knowing that he got taken down by a guy that usually he has a rivalry with coming to every track. Yeah, especially. And sometimes, I don't know, maybe sometimes it's that old ad adage where, you know, if you get a little bit of damage on the car, maybe it makes it feel better. Maybe right now that car's driving really good for Eli right now. Well, I know when you, I've talked with you and some of the other drivers out there, they've even mentioned to me that, yeah, that sometimes just a little damage tightens up the car and it makes it actually work better. And I really don't know how it works on asphalt-wise. I've only been in a couple races where I've actually felt that. Most of the time when I do some my cars up, they usually I'd rather have them a little tighter, a little looser, depending on the track. And if I end up getting messed up with damage, then I, my race is over with because I can never keep them on stable grounds. But then again, I'm usually on short tracks, so I'm used to giving bumpers and banging around there. Yeah, absolutely, and I guess it just depends on where that damage is. If it's in a certain quadrant of the car, not make it, make the car feel kind of different. Of course, if the cars run really bad, normally I'll just go up there and smack the crap out of the wall a little bit, and then sometimes it does make it fun better. <laughs> I certainly can indeed. Right now, I'm almost a full second ahead, though. I was on, I was talking earlier about Randall Fox to see if he would be tested, if he can catch K.O. Gale. Right now, K.O. Gale is showcasing his worth and his pride here, but he's going to have lap traffic in front of him with the final 10 laps coming up for the Blackstone Management Racing Crew. The 83 and the 3, What someone's going to give. Somebody's got to give out. And look at this right now, Fox, he actually gained about a full tenth on Gale just from lap traffic alone, making his way around Kyle Holden there. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, the lap traffic, you know, that's the thing too, when they see the leader coming, now, um, some of that lap traffic, you know, if they're like right on the edge of the lead lap or whatever, they're going to fight that leader a little bit more than they're going to fight the guy in second, so yeah, it definitely will slow the leader down a little bit more at this point as we're really getting close to the end of this thing. This is what short track racing could do for you folks, a lot of, folk, a lot of people out there do not realize how difficult it is to win when you're on a short track because if you got laps you got to kill and break down and you got as many cars they have on the track this is what slows the fleeter down this is what makes the playing field evened out so much this really proves in my opinion if you can get through lap traffic you can find a way around people and hold off the challengers behind you that truly shows what kind of a driver and the mentality you have it's a different, it's a thing or two to be running on a mile and a half, but it's a different sort of story when you're fighting it out right here and now as the caution flies, and that is not what K.O. Gale wanted to see, but the Mullen man, Robert Lawrence, having all sorts of problems. Another tough break for that 34 team. Oh, man, oh, man. This changes everything. Here's another look at it. This track has eaten and tore up a lot of equipment, but I think for the Blaster Master, I think there's nothing that tore up more than his pride here. This is what happened. Oh! Man, he overdrove that thing in hard, and the rear end just went sliding straight for the wall, and you can see he was spinning hard there. That's a tough break for the mullet, man. He's probably about ready to rip that mullet right out after, <laughs> after this race. <laughs> Wait a minute, just adds up to the 83 and the 3. They both have gone to pit road. Hmm, this makes things quite interesting indeed. Now, here's the backbone and the kicker. Falks, Harris, Davis, Infinger, Meeks, Ronzo, Jancic, Childs, Mann Jr., Batten, and Fornshell both went in. And those are the guys that were on the lead lap. Brock Whitehead will get put back on the lead lap. And as a matter of fact... I honestly, I don't know if this is going to be a smart strategy here, but I think he's going to go for it. He's going to be your new leader. I like it. I like the gusto. Go for it. Hey, you got nothing to lose at this point. <laughs> I, I don't know if I really like it too much, though, Sparky. I know we're pulling up on a green-white checkered restart, but, well, he's going to take it to pit road, it looks like. So him and Pearson are both going to go in. That may be a smart strategy, honestly, cause <laughs> I, I like the guts. Don't get me wrong. I like seeing a driver go for broke, but I don't think I would go that level of extreme because, again, 
fresh tires on really fast guys and you got guys trying to make their way through lap traffic yeah I w honestly I don't like my odds there not with them not with those type of old, old tires maybe if it was maybe 10 15 laps I may have thought about it or went for it but with them old tires man, you're just gonna get swallowed up like a shark eating a fish at that point so yeah probably smart idea Come on and take the lumps and get the tires and get back out there. I was about to say, like, you're going to be almost like trying to do what Kyle Busch even referring to down in Martinsville. It's like you get in trouble. Your ass can just get socked in the face here once in a while. Or he put a little more colorful language there, so. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't think me or you want to actually go ahead to uh, no. be training ourselves on that. No. <laughs> I wasn't even going to bring it up, but yeah, let's, let's not. <laughs> We'll pass on that. <laughs> Kevin Kerser rode on some boys here trying to get his boys in the KW saying, let's go, buddy, and then saying, come on in, finger time to wheel it. These guys right now are going to be in a hard charge scenario. The Marauder James Harris is one of the last guys that has any hope, any chance to hold up the three wide motorsports banner with him and his teammate, the man beast, William Mann Jr. And Mann Jr. is actually going to get put one spot down. They may have to get passed up by a few of these guys as they are currently revving up their motors, trying to get the fuel lines, injections all cleared out, get them ready to rip it. Because when they bring them to the restart, they have one thing they've got to watch out for, spinning the tires and not over-accentuating that throttle out of the gate in turn one. They have to keep it stable with a fresh set. This could be interesting with a green-white checker. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you don't want to mess up the start because then you're going to have a bunch of hungry guys pouncing on you. And now we've got all these guys back on the lead lap. Now we've got about 13, 14 cars on the lead lap now. So now there's not that cushion anymore. you got some more heavy hitters up here. We're going to see what these guys can do. It's going to be a fun show here. I'm ready to sit back and watch this. The fans have selected their choice. They want Infinger to win this one now. Westcott joins us in. He's going for him as well. They'll bring him to the green flag one more time. This is where everything plays out. Wait, 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 wait. Infinger ripped out of the front straight away. <laughs> Caution flag is out, and I think, unfortunately, that may have been the death blow to the 98 team. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. Wow. I'm thinking I saw the 29 get a bad restart. That may have started everything there. I couldn't tell from that angle, but that is not what any driver wants to see. That is not what anybody wants to deal with. What happened here? Let's take a look at the replay as they come off the start. Looks like Davis did not go when in, when man was trying to go. Man, and remember what I just said, Sparky, about spinning the tires? It happened right there. Yep, you were at Absolutely right on that. Definitely, that's what looked like definitely happened on that restart. You just cannot spin the tires on that front straightaway. That's what happens when you do that. Here's another look right there. You see the rear end slides right. Car steers left. He's trying to steer it back off. Too late. And Finger was right there with him, and the field just kind of gets collected. And Oh, my goodness. That is the hardest break to have to deal with as a driver. You never want to see that happen, and you never want that to be anything in the frame of mind. But racing can be an extremely cruel sport, and now this has boiled down to another green-white checkered attempt. But those that stay out, that goddamn is they run the risk of those that were in the back trying to hunt them up a little bit. They're going to have to make a chance. They're going to have to take a chance here. But there really is nothing they can do about getting in pit road and getting an instant repair if they don't have to, one set up. Yep, that's right. You pretty much, uh, at this point, you pretty much got what you got at this point. And uh, that might be uh, another thing is, is, you know, about these cars spinning the tires and stuff. That goes back to what I uh, mentioned earlier about pushing the envelope a little bit. Now you get down toward the end of the race, you want to try to get that best finish, but you want to get a little bit more. And maybe got a little jumpy there on the start. And that just, you know, it just happens that way. It's getting down toward the end of the race. You got to try to push it a little bit. Sometimes it get a little bit too antsy on the start and spin the tires. And that's what happens. This next restart, nobody can make a mistake. They've got to get close together and they've got to set the start up. They cannot 
be doing what they did just a minute ago and thinking that it will work like that again. It does not go two ways. You have got to get them close together and you've got to get some breathing room for yourself and the other to get off the start and set the gear just right. That's the one thing we always talk about. You're on that kind of that rainbow hill up. This D-shaped configuration kind of track of Richmond Raceway is really challenging on multiple fronts to have to work off that. But this is that scenario we were talking about earlier. Do not try to spin the tires and over and overextend that throttle. They extended the throttle and it got everyone off crazy then. Yes, it did. And now we got to try to stack it back up. Got to calm your nerves a little bit. Get yourself. Get yourself on top of that wheel because we got another shot at this here. We'll get them racked up here. Right now, another caution should be getting back to the uh, one to go, I believe, next time by here. We have Kale Gale up front, Randall Fox in second, James Harris in third, Michael Davis in fourth, and look who's running fifth. Our boy Tyler Meeks is up there in fifth. Good, good run for him now. The quick lane, number 35, has been pretty much hanging and in there the entire night, but this now might be his last ditch effort to make one last telling of the tale, one more chance at getting up on a few of these guys. One way back to the green flag here. Somebody is going to give, somebody is gonna win it. Which one is it? We are about to extend and find this out. And the covert operative, Mr. Brian Lorenzo is up there in sick. I forgot to mention him. He has snuck his way back up in there right where he is, normally is at the end of the race. <laughs> this restart tells our tale which one of these drivers wins it out off a of turn four they will see the stand kale gale sets a tone you hear him rock the engine forward it's to the green we're off one more time here at richmond we go down into turn one turn two kale gale holding the lead boss is going to try to get that run off of turn two is going to stick right through his bumper down the back straight away down into turn three they go they were three wide saluting in turn two but that doesn't matter anymore now the battle is for the race lead while the top five battle it out for the win for their top spots kale gale needs three more good turns he hits turn one pretty executed well off a of corner two, strong on the run. Randall Falk's looking to try to catch him. They crash down down the back straight away. Tyler Meeks is wrecking. He's wrecking down the back stretch. They'll ring him out of turn four, though. And K.O. Gale will hold off Falk's. Falk spins it on the front straightaway, but gets into the straight to the finish line just in the nick of time as they wreck it out on the front straightaway. <laughs> wow, yeah, that got, that got really wild there at the end. Good Lord, oh heaven, it did, my friends, but nevertheless, K.O. Gale and Randall Fawkes, respectfully, hold themselves out in their positions they finish at, and I think for Kale Gale, this one was just a little bit more sweet, knowing he defended off from where he had to start from the outhouse and get to the White House as much as he did tonight. Yeah, absolutely. What a drive to come from that penalty earlier on to come all the way from the back, back in the 20s and get himself all the way up here. This definitely was a well-deserved win for him. And uh, just, just an awesome way to get up through the field and a way to win that one. This whole Blackstone management team has been bad fast all season long. And once again, they just added another one to their resume. But even Kale, I don't think, was going to do the burnout. I think he felt a little bit... Uh, guilty for this one I think for some reason but I think I might know why but we won't say right now but nevertheless he is your race winner Randall Falk second third to Michael Davis fourth to James Marauder Harris fifth to Brian Lorenzo sixth to Brad Patton seventh to Greg Janzik eighth to the man B swimman junior ninth to Brock Whitehead tenth goes to Eli the wild child Sparky take it away for the top t top 20 now all right and 11th Richard Bornshell will finish 11th here today Nathan Meyer 12th Grant Anfinger, unfortunately, will drop back to 13th after that crash there earlier on. Kyle Holden in 14th. Tyler Mix ended up 15th after all getting all the way up to 5th. Sheldon Pearson, 16th. Rich Sargent in 17th. Robert Lawrence will come home 18th, 19th. Sean Bounty and Matt Johnson will bring it up home in 20th. Looking at the rest of our champions that are here in this case here tonight. Again, these champion fire equipment drivers obviously putting on a tremendous show and a fight to the end fitting. For their namesake, the Fast and Fun Cup Series certainly were fun to watch and crazy to watch. But nevertheless, we had to crown a winner 
We had to crown somebody here, and Michael Davis will walk away at least with a top five position. And I'm currently trying to see if we will get a hold of him here. I think he actually is a said now. Nah, I think we're going to call it good tonight, boys. I don't think we want to talk here tonight. I don't blame him, so we'll go ahead and give him the third place moniker here. But Randall Fox and Kale Gale are awaiting the command and waiting for our cue. So Sparky, we're gonna I'm gonna head right down there real quick and have a little listen in first. We're gonna bring in with Randall Fox. He now joins us in here, race fans here. Randall Fox, your second place finisher here tonight. Randall, congratulations there on a second place finish. And early on took the lead and had a commanding lead and presence on the start, but obviously the cautions kind of came out, kind of derailed a little bit. But you managed to still fire away a top two finish here with your teammate Kale Gale. But I gotta ask, with the the slide at the end was was that intentional or did the car just completely spin out as you hammered it? I, I threw it in the three, tried to get to his bumper on entry, and uh, about halfway through the corner, I gave it a little bit extra just to try to gain a little bit more. I was gonna try to maybe touch him a little bit without, you know, upsetting him, but um, it was just the car unloaded coming off the corner and. Thankfully, it slid the right way and didn't just go straight around. It got the P2. You certainly did indeed. Now, I know uh, I know, there's a lot going on for you and the team here, but obviously coming away with the top two finish here between your teammates, uh, how much does that mean for you guys and everything that played out here? Oh, man, it, it, it means the most because that's what we strive to do. Um, we try to come out here and, and, you know, have all our guys finish uh, the best they possibly can and, you know, getting a one-two uh, was really good. We were hoping for a little better one, two, three. Uh, Grant had a little bit of trouble, but overall, it was a it was a really good race. Um, I didn't really know what to expect coming in. Um, had a really good long green run, so that was uh that was that was really fun. Um, I had a feeling if Kale got back to us that he was probably a little bit better than I was here. So I was kind of uh I kind of wasn't surprised once he got out front. I really couldn't do nothing with him, but well, we gave it a shot anyway. You did indeed. Walking away with a second place finish here at Richmond of all things. Gotta mean a lot, so I gotta ask you who you want to thank you for this one. Uh thanks to Champion Power Equipment, Curb Records, everybody that puts this on. Appreciate y'all for broadcasting. Uh everybody puts in work to, to make us go fast. Uh Boyd Hogan. Uh Kale. Appreciate him this week. He he did some work too. Um just everybody involved with our team. Uh to make us so successful here and we're having a blast and we we'll appreciate it absolutely well Randall, appreciate your time here tonight with the blackstone man's Mary's team congratulations to you and the crew for this one appreciate it ladies and gentlemen their second place finisher here tonight randall falks there in the number three and then finishing in the top spot you heard just a minute ago it is kale gale your race winner here tonight and we're gonna bring him in real quick here as soon as we can get in touch with him here. Some guys are still talking quite a bit down here, so we're still trying to get in touch with him here. There we go. We got in touch with him now. Race fans, there he is. Your, number, your winner here tonight, 8083, Kale. Gale and uh, Kale, you know, early on, tried to start from the back because of the incident on the first start. But after that, it pretty much was just get it up there and stay up there, wasn't it? Uh, well, I made a mistake at the beginning of the race. I, uh... I jumped the start and didn't wait on the green. And anyways, uh, we had to come from the tail there. Um, we had a really good car. Uh, our Blackstone Ford was really fast and Randall was fast too. And Grant, we were all really good on that long run. Um, Randall kind of got messed up on a eye racing call. That was a little bit, we can't figure out really what happened, but rolls reversed. Uh, I think we were even in speed and, um, you know, uh, we had a really good car tonight, and rolls reversed. Uh, either one of us could have won the race, just about track position and managing the starts. For sure, there have been obviously a lot of, a lot really played out here in the last bit of the race here. Obviously, because you two ended up getting a one-two finish, but at any point did you think uh, he was actually going to probably knock you down a peg or two here coming to that end? It could have uh, if it went green there. Um, obviously, he. Um, it built up a good lead and then grant was trying a different strategy that could have played out in his favor. If it would have went green, he pitted quite a bit earlier, uh, which would have made up some time, um, for himself that might've played out longer. If it, the green flag stops would have cycled out. So it was really interesting. Um, like I said, our car was phenomenal. Uh, I want to thank everybody at, uh, Blackstone management racing, uh, champion power equipment blaster, 
uh, you guys for putting on the broadcast, Reaper Speed Labs, uh, for everything that they do. Um, this is probably my favorite track on the sim. So um, I had, you know, hopes of coming in here and winning this race tonight. And uh, fortunately, we were able to do that. Certainly there. And you are going to walk away with a W here, Kale. Appreciate your time here tonight, sir. And a big win here for Blackstone Management Racing Team. Yes, sir. You guys have a good, good weekend. You too, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, your race winner, Kale Gale, the number 83 driver, and Blackstone Management teams one and two to finish it out, as Kevin said in the comments. And uh, Sparky, that's really going to about do it here tonight. So a big thank you and shout out, of course, to our good friends over at Champion Power Equipment. You guys need some of the right to power tools and generators for your next outing or your next work. Great. Champion Power Equipment is the one brand name you trust. Head down to their website, championpowerequipment.com. To see their local listings and also check out their social media plat presence on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So you never know or miss the beat when they have a piece of a tool or equipment you need for your next job outing. Sparky, we're heading out of here tonight, man. We've got a lot of work to do, obviously, in the next week. But I think these guys are going to be really playing this one in when we get to Watkins Glen. Yeah, we're going to go back to the old road course here. We're going to go back to Watkins Glen and we'll see what they can uh, manage there. One of pretty much a lot of favorite people. Right, right, of course, watch the plans. So they ought to put on a good show out there today, out there this weekend coming up. And, uh, yeah, and congratulations to Kale Gale tonight on his win. And uh, Eli Childs brought it home in 10th. So that's probably a win for him, too, to consider <laughs> the rough night he had tonight. <laughs> uh, I about to say, I mean, he, he seemed like he was a little frustrated earlier. I think he can't be too mad now knowing what he's got. But that, we'll leave that up to him, and he can decide that for himself. But nevertheless, race fans, what a night, what a series, what a championship race we have coming up and more stuff to go. Speaking of championship races, again, good luck to everybody in their division in the uh, top four for trucks, Xfinity, and NASCAR. I'll get my thoughts on all that on Thursday night with our last broadcast before the championship races and who I think will be your winner. And uh, Sparky, before you go, Cup Series-wise, who do you who do you got your money on before we sign off? I think I'm going to go with that guy in the five car. I think he's going to be the be the fellow to beat if he got to the top four there at the end i figured he had the best shot and i think he's still gonna have the best shot we'll have to see if your prediction is right i'll give my thoughts come thursday night but race fans thank you so much for tuning in we appreciate your support we will see you next time when the green flag flies <laughs>